ऐसा हुई Uh, Sinek and Nunga, slight weight advantage from Sinek, like we talked about, goes to the height. It's all in Nunga's corner. And, you know, they got just about equal of the fights, but I think these guys are going to match up real well. I think there's going to be fire in the belly of Ali Sinek to uh, really stave off that charge of uh, a guy who seems to be being groomed for something. Well, his hair is nicely groomed. <laughs> I think that may be a requirement there at uh, <coughs> Remy Bonyaski's gym. We should probably ask somebody. Fighters. No elbow, no headbutt, no collision, no. Okay, so good. Good luck. Bye bye. Judge. 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 Time. Ready? Round one. Ilunga. In the red gloves versus Senek in the blue gloves. Oh, and you can really see the height advantage from Alunga right now. Okay, work with the legs, my friend. Work with the legs. Senek throwing hard in the clinch. Ready? They are allowed to clinch for three seconds, and you can do work there with knees or with wrestling. Yeah, Glory, we don't hug, <laughs> we fight. Senek seems determined to unload those hands. When you're facing a very technical fighter like Alunga, you sometimes have to make things into a roughhouse fight. You don't want to try and beat him technique for technique. Well, every fight is a chance to enter the glory tournament. This is not just one fight tonight these guys are stepping into. They're stepping into a future. I know there's a lot of implications here because these guys, uh, they have a whole system that uh, we're working here in glory. Both men trading hard blows there in the corner. Alunga going low with that right roundhouse kick. And he's doing a nice job of chopping the legs out from underneath those power punches. Although he took one there. That's the second right hand that Senek has landed in a row. They're going hard here. It's almost as if, oh, good right hand by Alunga. They may have made a phone booth deal, Frank. Right? They got a telecom company behind them. It's funny, we still use the reference of fighting in a phone booth, but there aren't any more phone booths now with mobile phones. If we could fight with mobile phones, that would make <laughs> I thought our elevator is about the size of a phone booth. We're fighting there. Exactly. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. It's not working. That's good. Oh, Senex got to get out of that corner. He's trapped in there. He's chopping the legs, getting his legs chopped out. Alunga very methodical, pacing himself very well. But still, a lot of energy used by both men in this first round. Senek really answering back with power punches, trying to connect. Senek's just teeing off with that right hand. The only problem is, you throw that right hand with all that power all the time, you're going to deplete your, your, your supply of it energy. It takes a lot of energy to stop that punch from flying out of the ring, especially when you don't hit somebody. Lunga slips to the canvas. Senek with a high kick, which was blocked, and a spinning heel kick, which missed completely. And end end of round one. one. Senek getting creative at the end of the round. I think... Part of that was due to frustration. Yeah, I think so. His right hands were getting through, but he's getting chopped up pretty good on the legs. Now, this is money. Staying inside like that and weathering those kicks and seeing the timing. That's where Senek's doing all of his damage. That's where he's making his money right here. He's got good timing. He waits. He knows he's got power in his right hand. Because he was losing the technical battle at the beginning of the round, but then he started to connect. With that uh, right hand. And maybe you're right, Steve. Maybe he's frustrated. Maybe he's just trying to throw something else out there and get the to stick on the wall. I'm going to find out right now. It's an interesting fact that 
doesn't really have time to relax because Alunga's right on him the whole time. The whole time. Staying on him, staying. That's what you need to do. And our judges have it. Uh, Interesting, almost split. Round two. Senate grabbing on as Lunga marched forward. Oh, nice. Placed right hand of the body. Oh, Senate may have found the timing, but there's a lot of slipperiness in this ring. Watch those knees from Younger. They come up fast and they come up uh, straight up the center. And Senek really loading up on that right hand now. He just shook his arms off a little bit. That's not always a good sign because that means maybe there's a lot of blood going through those muscles. Power punch a game is a tough one to play. I like how Senek's setting up with little kicks though. He's touching the inside of the leg. He's working the game, but he's relying on the hands. Zenik all outside bombs like that one which grazed the skull of Lunga and Lunga slips again. Zenik digging to the body and then with a front kick, a good teep right to the jaw of Lunga. Lunga appears to have slowed down his pace here. Slowed down. That left knee did land though. He's getting those knees up the center now. Younger's coming up straight, bringing those knees up to the solar plex. That's a powerful shot. You talk about getting tired, though. Senek hit him with a massive body shot about 15 seconds ago, and then one just before that. That's got to be sucking the life out of him. It's a smart move for Senek because Senek doesn't want to get depleted here against Alunga because Alunga will just march him right down. Yeah, and you're fighting a taller fighter. You rip that body. I would have to say that the game plan for both men was correct. They're trading here, but it appears that a little bit of the gusto may be escaping their punches as they start to get a little bit tired here in round number two. The Lunga lands with a chopping right hand. Both men showing wear and tear of this being a very action-packed fight. They're starting to get a little sloppy here, They're though. Getting, it's getting sloppy and it's getting dangerous. This is what it's getting. Yeah, because Senek keeps throwing those bombs like that. But they're throwing bombs back and forth at I'm each other. I'm telling you. That's one of the beauties of kickboxing. It's You only need three rounds, usually, because it's so much attrition. It's so much damage. Man. They were hammering each other at the end of that round. Wow. Senek appears to have caught his second win. Yeah, you know, the last round he was huffing pretty bad in the corner, and then all of a sudden he just kind of got a groove going. Maybe that is his speed. I would have to say that that first round, both this one, that's that a great ball. one. Yes. A beautiful spot. Then you see him move his head back, get out of the way of the counter. That's good timing and understanding of where your hands are. Yeah, it's got to be getting slippery out there. That's, uh, that's dangerous. Locked that overhand right, but uh, took a left hook to the body. Lunga did in, in that combination. And Sinek's winning this punching battle. He really is, and I think that the slipperage factor has only been for Lunga because Sinek has not slipped at all. That's true. Coach, Coach is on the ring, please. And the judges uh, clearly gave that to Lunga. I don't know. I think that maybe Senate could have pulled that out, but they were split. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I'd give it one and one right now. Round three. Senate with a lazy push kick to start. Senate reminds me a little bit of an old heavyweight boxer that fought Muhammad Ali called named Oscar Buenavino. Oh, I don't remember him. I like his style. Look though. at this man. He's coming after Alunga. Come on, let's go. Come on. 
You got the brawler versus the technician. What could we ask for? I mean, come on. Boom! That left roundhouse kick, that's getting in dangerous territory. Seneca has to be very careful to keep his right hand up. Well, both these guys trying to make a big impression in the Glory Series. Trying to secure their future, not only in the tournament, but in the Glory Series, it goes around the world. Two minutes remaining in this fight. Ilunga seems to be picking it up now. Both men have slowed considerably, but Ilunga continues to press. Yeah, he's pressing him. He's trying, to, he's trying to finish here. That's the thing. Even though Stenik is landing some counter shots, Ilunga is the one who's making the fight happen. They were only allowed to clinch for three seconds, and Lunga didn't wasn't able to chamber a knee or crack Senek with one of those. I like the whole not clinching thing. I like to see them, you know, have a good range to let them go and create a combination. I like really good clinch fighting, but sometimes you can exploit it and, and slow down the match. Yeah, that's the only downside. How about the elbows? What do you think about the elbows? I'm fine with them being gone. I mean, elbows, it, it, it could be an easy win to a guy that's losing a punching battle. Yeah. You crack a guy with an elbow and he can get stopped in the cut. So it, you have to win the skill here in glory. And speaking of skill, Lunga continues to press forward, but now he's moving back. But he never throws single shots. Everything is in a combination from Daniel, Debuba, Lunga. Yeah, and one of the things Zenik's got going for him, when he punches, he moves his head in another area. So he's throwing a punch, he's moving his head to the other side. He's always moving out of the way while he's punching. That's true, but those right low kicks to Stenik's left leg are starting to add up as we wind down here in round number three. And Lunga putting a lot of pressure here on Ali Senek. Senek doesn't have the answers he had earlier in this fight, although that right hand is still there. Time is running out for Ali Senek. And that's it. We go to the judges. Well, you said it, uh, Steve, and it was all about the brawler versus the uh, the technician. And what a technician game Ilunga played, keeping the range. And, you know, he just got, sometimes he got into the firefight. You know, he got in there and got it done, and it was very effective. I mean, you see him working on counter punches here. That, that straight right was beautiful, these short shots. He's taking shots, but he's giving shots. And I think the leg, the leg kicks, the body stuff, that was really good work. And one thing I noticed about Ilunga, for a technical fighter, he's aggressive, and that's rare. Yeah, he moves forward. He keeps the game going. That's what you need. That's what people are looking for. That's what the fans like, and that's what Glory's about. You want you want Glory. You want the shot, the light on you. The light gets on you when you knock somebody out in that ring. And for our decision, we go to the judges. Score card. We have a winner of this contest. And the winner from the red corner, Daniel Dibuba Iluga. Was, was he, he tougher, tougher than you expected? expected? Yes, of course it, he was. He was very tough, very strong. And I like his fight, fight style. He don't give me a chance to make my knee. But uh, I keep doing pressure and I hope you enjoy the fight. And I'm happy to here to fight again in Belgium. Boss. You're a great technical fighter. And but what Frank Shamrock and I were talking about in the commentating book was your hairstyle. Is it required? that Remy will tell you to do a wild hairstyle? Uh, no. This is my own style because Remy do it like this. But uh, 
I think that we'd look a little bit the same, I think.